Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I know 1.2 is very much on the horizon at the moment, but we've still got a few things to clean up in 1.17. First up being the heritage armor for the Forsaken. So let's get into it. So first up, when you log in on an undead character, you should get the quest pop-up Unliving Summons. If you do not, that means you don't meet the requirements. So let's go through what they are. Now I will say, I have seen some people say you need to be level 50. Some people in guild said, oh, I'm level 50 and I've got it. All I will say is that guaranteed, my character is level 61. So above 60 is the first requirement that I can say guarantee. Some people have said 50, but we will go with 60 because that's what worked for me. We're off to a good start with this one. Next up, you're going to need to be exalted with the Undercity. Now I've run the Steam Vaults, as you can see in the background here, over and over again, just to get my last bit of reputation. It's a little bit annoying because you don't have any vendors to sell to, so soon your bags are gonna fill up. But all you need to do is grab the Undercity tabard which you can get from the walls of Ogrimmar then go and run steam vaults over and over again and eventually you'll get an absolute ton of reputation and it took me no time at all to get my exalted finally you're going to need to do the Cilia Minifil quest line that basically reclaims Lordaeron because obviously in BFA it got all covered in green stuff well we need to go and clean it reclaim it and gain our home again so yeah that is located in Oribus. Go and talk to Cecilia. Do the whole quest line. Clean it up. I hadn't done that quest when I did it. And finally had it all completed. Right at the end of that quest line. After I talked to Cecilia. Bang. The Unliving Summons quest popped up. And I was able to start the Heritage quest line. So it turns out we have our home back. Yet there are still dangers that lurk. Little side note here, I would love it if Blizzard actually made the top part of Undercity, where we are now, the ruins of Lordaeron, into the Undead City. That would be absolutely fantastic. But anyway, we need to talk to Lillian Voss, because the Scarlet Crusade, it would appear, are at it once again. Yes, we thought we had defeated them, but it turns out the Scarlet Crusade never die. Yeah, they've decided to take over Fenris Island, so we are told to go and report to Belmont. And we shall see what exactly is going on. So here we are, and yeah, things have looked better. We have some dead undead. We have a burning crusade, or flip. Scarlet Crusade banner on the floor. What exactly is going on, Belmont? Tell me. And indeed he will. Because we get a neat little cutscene. So let's watch it. Another So that's not great. Scarlet Crusader back. They've decided that once again the Forsaken must be eradicated. Yada yada yada. Some things never change. Belmont tells us we need to go to our forward base of operations and see if we can do something about this menace while they hold the walls of Lordaeron from falling to the Scarlet Crusade. So all we need to do is, I mount up, but you don't need to fly, just talk to this mage behind you, and they'll be like, yeah, I'll teleport you, don't worry about it. So here we are in our forward base in Silverpine Forest, over to the west of Fenris Isle, southwest of Lordaeron. We have a couple of quests to do here, because we need to find some way of breaking the Scarlet Crusade's hold on the island, and if you've done... Any of the Silver Pine Forest stuff, either way back in the day or even relatively recently, you will get a little kick out of this because some of them are a real return to old school undead questing. They even make a point of, you know, a return to the classics, which is you basically have to go and pick a load of flowers. Yay. You have to kill some bears, boars, and various other creatures to get some meat, as you can see here. And then we have to destroy a number of pamphlets that have been nailed to the walls. So, once we have, as I say, picked the flowers, killed the bears, and flamethrowered the various pamphlets, you will see on my minimap now, there's little gold discs. 
those give you locations. I will say, you can see just to the left of me, on that tree, there is some tiny little thing glowing. That is actually one of the pamphlets that is clipped into the tree. So they can be hard to see, but just keep a lookout. They're all over the place. Shouldn't be a problem. So with those done, we head back to our Silver Pine camp, and we say to them, job done. And they say to us very kindly, hey, how would you like to have this banshee follow you around? We say yes, please, because we need one final thing. We need the uniform of an officer, and we need to scare some peasants, but mostly we need that uniform so we can sneak into the Kralot Scarlet Crusade camp, easy for me to say. So, we're going to pick the banshee that you want. I think I went for the white one, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. They all do the same thing. With our banshee in tow, it's off to kill... A lieutenant. So yes, we kill this lieutenant. We're going to want their... I was about to say skin, which is not what we want at all. This is only a team game, Grim. Calm the hell down. We want their uniform. That's more like it. Yes, we need their uniform. This is not a hard fight. They're mostly going to stay terrified. And you can just... Yeah, as I say, I'm level 60. All of this scales, so it's really not an issue. Then what we need to do is just head outside and all around the farm you will see various laborers cutting down trees and so on we're just going to scare them while they're scared they're easy enough to kill and then it's time to return to celia and lillian so here we are back at base ready to hand in i will say side note here i started this at 61 and i'm about to ding so the xp from this isn't actually that bad either but anyway then on a side note now we are done we can hand in we can get our uniform on we can pick up a barrel of mm, suspicious materials and then we can head to the Fenris Isles. We need to talk to this particular NPC who will say, Hi, you want to chat? You want to talk? You can even just stare at them silently because you're a lieutenant and how dare they talk to you. Or you can say, Yes, I'm a lieutenant definitely in the Scarlet Crusade. The crusade that is Scarlet and likes to do Scarlet Crusade-y things. And that is me, I'm a lieutenant. And either way, they'll just be like, okay, go for it. Uh, I don't really care. So you get this nice little boat ride. Which, I love the fact that nobody cares that you have this giant canister on your back. And doesn't seem particularly worried about it at all. It's got like a crusade. Yeah, very, very, very racist. But apparently very trusting. Which is nice. You do get some little bits you can talk to. You're like, oh, hey, what is that? You're like, oh, it's supplies, it's beer. Oh, can I have some? Uh, no um so yeah there we go but anyway now you are on the island that it's time to disrupt operations there are a number of things you can do i will say be very careful if you are a lobby character like i am or just a character that you're not particularly sure of playing this island is full of elites if you see a horseman generally run if you're not confident of the character you're playing which i wasn't on this so i avoided them like the plague but once you have blown up cannons and burnt banners and killed all you need to kill, it's time to head to Celia and Lydian, who have now moved up. They're just outside the Fenris Hall Keep. And they will say to you, let's head inside and let's finish this and kill the commander. So Commander Forsyth is now our target. I just flew over the top, dived on in, and I did think, hang on a minute, I can stealth, but I wanted to see how hard the fight in here was going to be. So I am actually going to engage some of these ads, and yeah, you're absolutely fine. So you can see I'm stealthy. I thought, well, no, let's test this. So I attack this guy. Yeah, Lillian kind of does what Lillian does. So I'm just having a general fight, and then Lillian, yeah, says that you're a really crap rogue grim, and that's how you should deal with things, just by killing them and one-shotting them. I wanted to see if this was just a one-off. So I attack this person, and it's not a one-off. Lillian is, yeah, Lillian. And the same goes for the last boss. I did engage straight away, which meant I got aggro, but then he eventually turns around and starts fighting Lillian, so there's nothing to worry about there. There is a bit where you need to use your Will of Forsaken ability, but you don't need to find it from your book. It just comes up with an extra action button. Bit of a shame, but fine, you know, I can accept that. Once we've killed the commander, that's it. We're done. Don't worry about halfing out or anything, because you're actually told, hey, meet me downstairs. So you run out. Go downstairs and Lillian will be there with a mage who, once you've handed in your quest, will then basically just teleport you out to wherever you need to be. Voila. So yeah, we talk to Lillian. She appears miraculously. Hey, she's a super stealthy rogue, whatever. We talk to her. 
you've done so much for us. Uh, my little Voss impression. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's the best I could do. But yeah, we hand him, talk to the mage, and we are teleported back to Lordaeron. To a complete honor guard of abominations. We have the Royal Death Guard, I think they're called. Those ones in the Lordaeron armor. Yeah, everybody has apparently turned out to witness us in all of our glory. Which is nice. Thank you very much. And we need to go and talk to... What is yet another council for the Horde? Does this make the Horde more like progressive than the Alliance? I don't know. Anyway, this is what's going to give us all of our various heritage armor. Also, it's going to give us access to the Loyalist of the Queen tabard. And the new Forsaken tabard. Now, we'll say you might want to turn around at this point, because I didn't realise that actually you need to go and be presented to the undead of Lordaeron, so I was waiting for something to happen here. I mean, they're all talking, it's good, you can stand around and get some determination, or, you know, vast strength, our determination, our cunning, and all that good stuff, but yeah, really, you just want to go back across the bridge, because there is a giant, grim, turn around, there's a giant, there we go, see, there's a giant blue circle. We present ourselves to all of our undead friends. They're like, yay, 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 and that's it. Now we can go back, talk to the council, and they will present us with all of our goodies, which I will say is a nice looking heritage set. I still stand by the fact it looks a lot like the set we got from BFA, apart from it's a bit more blue than it is purple, which is fine. I like the undead aesthetics. If you don't like it, then yeah, you're just not going to like it. But, yeah, it looks okay. So, rather than me gassing on talking about it, let's actually go and transmog and see what this set really looks like. And here we are. I even added a few weapons that I thought looked good. They're the ones from BFA if you're interested. But, yeah, it's a fine-looking undead set. It, it, it does what it says on the tin. It's very spiky. It's got a, I mean, it's got a coffin on the back. Come on, what more do you want? But I do think there's a lot of these components can be used with other appearances. I do think it works very well for the rogues you can see. I also think like a dark ranger set, you could do something very cool with that. But yeah, that is us done, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching and staying with me. I'll catch you all in the next video. Stay safe. Ladies, everyone.